So boys, 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 welcome back, everybody. Appreciate all the support. The last Dortmund video was at like 500 and something views. So appreciate all the support. Everybody who's watching the videos, all new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Look, we've been having a good time. The Dortmund save has been a lot of fun. We do have a couple of transfers in today's video with enough. I would say nothing too crazy, but it's a couple of people that we want to kind of get at the door. It's not that I want to sell them. It's just the fact they're kind of disrupting the team. And you know how it is. Look, I, I don't keep players in the team who don't fucking want to be here. If all they're going to do is just complain, I get them out the door. Because it's ruining our squad harmony, boys. <laughs> so we'll jump over first. I'll show you the people that are going out the door. And then we'll show you all the, the basically the results and stuff. Things have been going very, very well. The two big games today, we're going to be playing Bayer Leverkusen in the German League, and then we're going to be playing Newcastle in the Champions League. So we had an offer come in for one of our players. It was, it was well under the valuation. I think they offered like 15 or 20 million under like their starting price. So basically the offer come in, look, it's a player I'm not really overly looking to get rid of. And I said, no. Then he got upset a spaghetti, as they do, because unfortunately it is a Premier League team. It's Chelsea offering for him, and he wants to leave. So the offer's looking pretty good. I renegotiated it. And as you can see, that offer is for Giovanni Reina. It is a total of 80 million. Look, a player, like we talked about in the previous episode, a one I'm not overly looking to get rid of. He does get niggles and he gets quite a lot of injuries. But he's only 21 years old and he's very, very good. But for 80 odd million, I think this is a deal. One, we kind of have to take because he's upset and wants to fucking leave. But I think this is very, very good money. We get 50 million up front. We get 30 million over the next 12 months, which is absolutely fantastic. So this is a deal, boys. I'm going to accept this one. So then with us losing Giovanni Reina, I was going to need to replace him. Look, I was, I'm not going to lie. My first thought was right. Bring somebody in German. Very, very good. Has a lot of potential. Still reasonably young. The first person that came to my mind was probably Florian Wirtz. Funny thing is, he actually wants to leave Leverkusen and wants to go to a bigger team. So I have offered for him, and we'll kind of see. It, it's going to be a lot of money because it's fucking Florian Verts. But the person that I've offered for that has been accepted today is somebody that we did chase a while ago, and then he ended up going to Man City. And that person is Kan Uzan. You just don't remember what this little guy's like. So he's only 18 years old. He's German, playing a two-star, has five-star potential. He's got a good personality. He's consistent. can play with both feet. He's six foot one. He is everything that we need as someone to play. Like I said, also German, young, so he's going to be around for a long time. Like I said, Man City swooped in. They got him for half a million. So we offered six million. And then they said no, or he said no. I can't remember what way it worked. It, it, the deal ended up didn't. Oh, I know what it was. No, no, I just lied to you. We offered six million. And then I needed that money because we were selling Sully because he wanted to leave. And then Sully rejected that team then I couldn't get him because I didn't have the money. And then two weeks later, the, another team came in and offered for Sully. And we accepted that. We got the deal through. And I was like, right, let's go back and offer for him. And the, t the period between the first transfer not going through and then Sully going to the next team, Man City had signed him already. And it was six million. Like I had to pay six million and they paid half a million. But I'm getting sidetracked. So... Like I said, everything we need, 17 dribbling, 14 finishing, 14 first touch, passing's phenomenal, penalty taking's phenomenal, technique is good, vision is good, flair is good, determination's good, composure's good, and he's only 18 years old. Like I said, we are going to have to pay a total of like 34 million, but we're getting 80 million for Giovanni Reina, so technically we're making a huge profit of like what, like 46 million? And this is one I definitely want, look, you know how excited I was to get him in the door. I'm still so upset, I would rather have paid 6 million. But look, 34 million for a player that we're going to have around for so fucking long. And like I said, we just made a profit of 46 million from selling Reyna. This is what I want to get in. So squad player, he's happy enough with that. I'm Honestly, my biggest surprise is that Man City actually wants to sell him. Because like they just signed him that January there. And then privacy, we won't get him till January because we're already in the middle of the season here. Um, I'm surprised they're selling him. I suppose they're thinking, right, we paid, what, half a million and these numpties are giving us 34, right? He wants 65 million claws. I'm going to put that to like 80. And I'm going to give him like 47. He wants that clause. Hold on, right? I want I want the 80 million. Let's go 68. Why is that? So the most I can give him 67. He really wants that fucking six. What about 70? I'm happy enough of that. 70 million buyer clause. Look, we buy him for 34 double our money it is what it is once again if he's happy at the club 
after like half after like a season i'll just basically offer him another contract and just rip that fucking bio clause out of there so the next person that we got an offer for was cobell look i think cobell is a fantastic keeper he really really is but he just he he's just constantly upset that i'm not playing cream Adiyama, even though i've told him a bunch of times kareem is not good enough to basically start instead of yusuf makoku and he just keeps getting upset he gets upset, then he upsets other players. So I'm thinking I'm just going to get Cobell out of the team. I'm very, very happy with Dennis Seaman. Is he a wee bit of a downgrade for the meantime? Yes. But he's a keeper that we can have for a long time. Also, we only paid like, what, 5 million for Dennis Seaman. So the fact that we can sell Cobell for 40 million, could he get, probably get a couple, like an R5 million for him? Probably. But just want to get him out the door. So Brighton have come in, offered us 40 million. Honestly, I'm just going to accept this. Juventus offered 24. I'm not going to accept that. That's 24. Bit of a piss take. But if we can get 40 million for him and we only paid 5 million for Seaman, that's another fucking, what, 35 million pound profit. So we're doing really, really well with like selling players and bringing cheap, young, good players into the team and making a huge profit. Also, the board has given us more money. They give us another 24 million. So our transfer budget currently at the minute is sitting at 72 million. And then we're about to get. 40 million for Cobell, so that's going to put us up to what like 110 million that i'm not really overly going to spend because i'm pretty happy with the team that we've got right now like i said previously we have giovanni reina going at the door at the start of january here and then we have Khan coming in that's a huge difference like we get rid of reina for 80 million brought in Khan for 34 so we made like a 46 million pound profit and then we made like a 35 million pound profit on Cobell. so we're doing pretty well like i said if, if the offer comes up which oh by the way um, Florian Verts, they wanted 106 million for him, so uh, Florian Verts ain't coming to the team, boys. So we ran into another problem. Apparently, Cobell is too good to play in the Premiership and doesn't want to sign for Brighton. So Juventus are the only team coming in and offering for him. Once again, they've offered their 24 million. It's non-negotiable. Honestly, I would love to get the 40 million for him, but I just want to get him out the door. Like I said, he's upsetting the team. And it's kind of annoying a little bit. Like, we're taking a wee bit of a hit with regards to money. But look, we're doing very, very good financially. Normally, if I was at a team, I wouldn't sell them. But like I said, we're like, I don't know, 100 million good with regards to like transfer. So I'm not going to worry about this too much. And like I said, he's upsetting the team and just getting annoyed that he's not playing and Kareem Adiyemi not playing. So I'm just going to get him out the door to Juventus. And hopefully this is all over with. So then we also have the chance to get rid of Kareem Adeyemi. Look, honestly, nobody wants him. Like, nobody even wants him on loan, never mind a transfer. We're only going to get 14.2 million for him. Once again, if this was another club and I was really, really struggling for money, I would just laugh this off. But it's 14.2 million in the bank. He's also on nearly 100 grand a week and he's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Like I said, I cannot get rid of Kareem Adeyemi. I even offered him out for loan. Nobody wants him. So the fact that we're getting 14.2 million, look, it kind of sucks. He's German. I would love to keep him around. But 90 grand a week for someone to sit on the bench. And he's not happy to sit on the bench. So hopefully we can get him out the door to Lazio. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to hit accept like I am right now. And he's going to reject Lazio. So perhaps he getting Cobell out the door. Look, it was nothing that I really overly wanted to do. But like I said, he's disrupting the team. He's So the, the main thing is, I think we talked about this previously in another episode as well, is all he's doing is complaining that Adeyemi's not playing. Look at look at this team. I am not going to take Garo Karras or Koku out of the team. I'm not going to do it. There is not a fucking chance I'm going to take any of them two off the front line to put Adeyemi in. And even when we give Adeyemi a chance, he plays absolutely terrible. So like, he wants a chance. I give him a chance. He does nothing. Like, I'm not going to play him. Also, he rejected Lazio, so he ended up not going to Lazio. So I'm, I'm still trying to get rid of Adeyemi. He's so bad in this game. It's so fucking hard to get rid of him. Honestly, joking aside, I might end up having to just offer him out for like 10 million and just see if I can get rid of him. Or is, when's his contract even out? Is his contract going to run out anytime soon? 27. We're still going to have two years left on his contract. It is unfortunate. Look, physical stats. He's explosive. Good on the ball. First touch. Terrible. Hasn's terrible. Vision's terrible. Teamwork is terrible. The rest of his mental stats, they're not too hot either. Eight concentration, nine decision making, ten composure. It is unfortunate because Kareem Adeyemi is one that we all loved. Like FM22, Kareem Adeyemi was absolutely insane. Like everybody was bad at him. So it's just unfortunate in this one that he's not great. But I'm look, I'm not gonna change the team. Seaman, German keeper. Nets, German left back. Baku, 
German right back. Then we have two German midfielders and then another German attacker midfielder and Makoko. So we, we do have a good little mix of like German look when it comes to the back line with Anasio, Diamandi and Euro. It is what it is. Look, we had to spend big and we did talk about this previously. Euro is fantastic, but we did have to pay an absolute shit ton of money. But he's going to be one of those players that's going to be around for a long time. If I would have known about this guy, Samson Abedu, I probably would have bought him and not bought Euro because he only costs us, what, like fucking 17 million and he's now worth 90 to 104 where we had to pay like what, like 80 million for Euro and I thought 80 million, it's kind of the going, let's be honest, it's kind of the going rate for really, really good footballers in a minute. Man United paid 80 million. 80 million for Anthony? That just says it all. Who would you rather take? Danny Euro or fucking Anthony? I feel bad for Anthony because I actually kind of like him as a person because like he seems to just work fucking hard but he's very he needs to work on his other foot we're, I know we're going on a tangent and we're going off topic I would like to see Anthony work on his other foot and be a wee bit less on he's, he's very predictable because he gets a ball does a wee shimmy and then he'll cut on his left foot where if he had a good right foot like it doesn't have to be phenomenal where he could just like do a wee feint and then run around something because he is quick he works hard and like he's one of those players you do want to keep in your team, but like it just you don't want him getting the ball and then not going past people because that's what a winger is for to go at people, go at them. If say he does six dribbles, lose the ball three times, you're like, right, okay, he's gonna work back and get it. But them three times that he goes past someone, like that's like goal scoring opportunities. No I mean, no I mean, boys. <laughs> We always get off topic somehow. But yes, the team is looking very, very good. And like I said, I like this wee mix of a lot of like young German players. And then we have like, privacy. the only people that aren't German in the first team is Inacio, Diamande, Euro, and Gairo Karras. The rest of them are all German. Very, very young. Privacy Darvuch, we don't currently own him yet. But this is one look. He's only valued at 18 to 23. Five star potential. He's only playing at two. This is him at two star. Two star. 15 dribbling, 14 first touch, 15 passing, 16 tagging, vision, flair, determination is good, good composure. And you got to remember, he's only 18 years old. If we can wrangle a wee deal for him at some point, look, I'll pay. I'll happily pay 18 to 23 million. How much money have we get left? We have 102 million left because of the sales that we've had. If I can get Darvich, I would happily pay 25 million for him. I think he's, he's just really, really good. Him and I think Asan Quadrago and Khan Uzan as our three midfielders. Like, that, they're all 18 years old. That, that's us for the rest of the save, boys. Well, unless uh, we get a chance to buy Milinkovic Savage. Look, I'm still, I know people are laughing in the comments of the videos, saying there's no way you're going to get Milinkovic Savage. Like, you've got a really, really good team. If SMS becomes available as a free transfer, I think it's next season. It's, it, I think it's always the third season he's available. If, look, uh, boys, if I get a chance to bring him in, I may end up bringing him in. I don't know. There's also the hypotheticals of we can't always guarantee we're going to get Darvich. We can't. Like, I don't know if he's going to, if we're, he's going to want to sign for us. I also need to check. How big is Uzgan? He's not bad. 6'1", play with both feet. Not really massively physical, but there's, I don't think there's a huge comparison between him and Darvich. Yeah, they're very, very similar players. So, worst case scenario, right? We don't get Darvich. I move Uzkan. I don't know why I keep calling him Uzkan. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> We're just going to call him Uzan because that's, you know, his actual name. Worst case scenario, we play Uzan and Asan Quadrago in the middle of the park. Big, strong. No, I mean, they'll be stronger as they get older. And then we play SMS in here or I put SMS in the middle of the park because he's like 6'3", 6'4", isn't he? Yeah, he's like 6'3". He's also got 18 strength. So we more than likely play him and Asan in the middle of the park and then put Uzan in behind and just keep him where he is. This is hypotheticals. Like, like I said, I don't know if we can guarantee. I would. My first choice is if I can keep Darvuch, fantastic. And then if we can't get him, because let's be honest, he plays for Barcelona, he may want to stay there. We'll just have to see what happens down the line. If I play him a lot this season and he likes playing for us and we do well in the Champions League and stuff, I think there's a good chance we can get him. But the, like, I have been wanting to play SMS. We got him in the Ajax save at the end of the third season. At the start of the fourth season, he was coming to us, but we didn't continue the Ajax save. Obviously, we tried with... um the Spartan save, he didn't want to come to us at all. He didn't want to come to us. And then the Man United save, I didn't know SMS was available. 
for a free transfer. I think we also finished that after like three seasons, didn't we? Because we won the Champions League. We had won everything with United. We won the league, the Champions League, and all the cups and everything. So we stopped that save and like moved on to the next one. But SMS is one I do want to get in. And like I said, this is all hypothetical hypotheticals. We can't get Darvich. We play SMS. But I think I'm probably going to get him. Look, the man's got 20 natural fitness. I know he's going to be like 31 ish by the time he gets his 31 32 but he's got 20 natural fitness 17 stamina 6 3 amazing with both feet and he's just everything you need yeah is he fast no but like some of the best fucking footballers aren't quick looking at Iniesta wasn't a, wasn't fast just a phenomenal footballer and Savage is kind of like that good on the ball not quick but like the man's 6 3 with 18 strength who's gonna push him off the ball so then down to the results. Previously, you were here for the Porto game. I get so sidetracked. See when my brain starts running about football magic. But you guys seem to enjoy this. But you just get to see what I'm thinking. It's not just like we turn up. Oh, we have four new players. And like everybody's like. What, like what, what? Why did you bring them in? I like to give you a wee bit of background. Some of the players pan out. And like we either don't get them. Or we don't have the money. Or maybe I just find someone a wee bit better. And then I like to give you a wee bit of backstory. And like what I'm thinking and like why I would like to bring those players in and like you look you just keep liking the videos and keep watching them so it's kind of your fault at this point too as well I'll take half the blame but you have got to take half the blame too <laughs> right Union Berlin played them in the Bundesliga beat them 2-1 Dame Bondi and Gao Karras scored for us then we played Dynamo Dresden in the DFP Bacau in the second round we beat them 2-1 Prince and Ng and Marco re scored for us Drew Hoffenheim, look, it is what it is. You're going to draw some games. It just is what it is. Then we jumped into the Champions League after the Porto game. We played Bran, beat them 5-2. We had Nets get two. Diamande got one. Murley got one. And Nicholas Fulkirk got one. Then HSV beat them 9-0. Don't wait, it was, it was a pretty close game. <laughs> we had Baku got one. Baku played fucking amazing. Granted, everybody, it's one of those games everybody played amazing. But Baku was really one of the standouts. I know Okoku got a hat-trick, but Baku was all over the park. He has been probably one of our best signings. I was looking, so when I was buying him, I was thinking, 8 million, he's a good backup, can play with both feet, he's German, he can also, he's got a good personality, enjoys the big games, consistent, but he can play on both sides, and I was like, right, super version. Then I put him into the team whenever Felix got hurt. Felix is back, and I haven't played him. Felix is not fully fit, but I'd like, I'm not going to take him out. Look at his performances. 8.7, 9.7. 7.3, 6.6, it is what it is. We drew with Byron. 8.2, 7, 7.5, 7, 10, 7.4, 7, 8.3, 8.3, 7 7.10, and then he just played a 10 in that game that we were showing you there. Look, 22 appearances, 6 goals, 16 assists, and a 7.78 7 for the season. Like, he, for 8 million, an absolute fucking steal. But he got one, Hassan got two, well, the thing won't go. Rena got one, Frolkar got two, and Makogu got three. Then we moved over to Colm, beat them 3 2. A very, very, like a fucking close game. Just one of those games where, like, it just it was just back and forward constantly. They also scored a couple of super late goals as well. Like, we were just, we were cruising. And then, honestly, I should have brought a few people off because a few people were tired. And I thought, right, we're, it's 3 0, we're cruising. And it just, it was kind of my own fault we conceded the two late goals. But like, no, I mean, mistakes, they happen. We had Didiz, Guy Carreras, and Makoku score. Then we played Benfica, beat them 3 1. Brandt got one, Gao Carreras got one, and Makoku got one. Very, very good result. Benfica, as you know, very, very good team. Then we went and played Schalke, beat them 3 0. Riddell, Baku, Yoro, and Reina scored for us. Then we played Sevilla in the Champions League, beat them 5 2. Gao Karras got two, but he also missed a penalty. So this could have ended up being like a good 6-3. And then Yadiz got one, Makoku got one, and Reyes got one. Bunjung Gladbach beat them 2-0. Uh, Yadiz and Gao Karras again. Then we played Dusseldorf in the, the third round of the cup. Ended up beating them 6-0. We had Beidou got one, Badishabu got one, Nets, Makoku, Fulkirk, and Emery Khan. As you can see, it rotated the team a little bit. I thought, right, third round of the cup, I'll give everybody a little bit of a break. Bundesliga then back. Played Stuttgart, Gao Keres missed a penalty again, so this could have been five. <laughs> but Diamande got two, Gao Keres could have got two, and Makoku got one. Played mains, beat them 2-0, nice solid performance, just everybody played like decent across the board. Not, nothing flashy, but a nice wee 2-0. As you can see, the last like five games, haven't conceded a goal, conceded a goal and, con and we've actually scored a decent amount of goals. 
But Mainz, like I said, Brandt got both of those goals. Then we played uh, Werder, beat them 3 0, Nets, Diamande, and Gao Karras. So we were absolutely flamma for regards to results. Like, we're playing well. Like, the only team we've lost to all season so far has been Bayern. I'm happy enough for that. It's a big game against a big team. They're always going to be hard to beat because they've got very, very good players. Bundesliga, 17 games, 15 wins, two draws, no defeats, 54 goal difference. We are absolutely smashing them. And as you can see by the fucking player stats, we're killing it. Makoku and Gao Karras are first and second. Baku, Nets, and Makoku in there for average ratings. Riddell Baku, Reina, and Nets in there for assists. Then we have Baku and Nets in there for player of the matches. And Seaman is... We're also scoring a fuck ton of goals, but we're not conceding a lot of goals. Granted, yes, I know, look, a lot of the German teams are not amazing. Look, I'm not going to like be like, this is, we're, we're the best team ever. Look, yes, some of the teams we're playing against are not amazing. But do you know yourself in Football Manager, those wee small teams are the ones that will beat your ass. So like I said, with regards to the team, look, I'm very, very happy with everything we've done. Look, I think, I know a few people are going to be like, Mark, you sold Giovanni Reina, but look, 80 million for a player that gets injured all the time, I think was very, very good business. Because if you do go in the Giovanni Reina, look, he's only 22 years old, 22 years old. Look at the injuries this man has had at 22. 20, like he's, by the time we saw him, he was 21. 20, look at the fucking injuries of 21. And like, this is probably going to get worse as he gets older. His natural fitness will go down. His stamina will go down. And like I said, I think for us, getting rid of him for 80 million, look, he's going to get 12 stamina and 13 natural fitness. So that's going to degrade pretty well over time. And like I said, it is unfortunate. Great player. Would have loved to have him around, but it is unfortunate. But we got 80 million and then we got Cannon, which was really, really good. Like I said, and we still have a few players like Brandt and stuff. I'm on the fence about what to do. Like I was already talking about Milinkovic, Savage. We still have Brandt on the team, but Brandt's one of those ones. He's amazing. Like he really, really is. 28, he's going to be around the team. He's more than likely going to start instead of Duvarch most of the time. But Duvarch, I have to play quite a lot because I want to bring him in the team. Julian Brandt, he's at his potential. We could also maybe get a lot of money for him. He's valued at 80 to 100 million. So if we say we were to get rid of Julian Brandt for, we'll talk hypotheticals, 60, 60 million, because like it's hard to wrangle deals unless player, unless teams come in and offer. Say 60 million, right? And we get Darvich for 25 to 30. It's the same thing as the Reina thing. We bring in a player for half the price and sell one of our players for double what that player that we're bringing in is worth. I think, look, this is deals that I do want to get done. Will it happen? I don't know. Hypotheticals, once again, if Darvidge doesn't want to sign and for the next season or so, we just play Julian Brandt in the middle of the park. Anytime Brandt plays, he plays well. He's German, he's 28, but he doesn't seem upset that I'm not playing him every single game. So if he's happy to just like chill, I don't need to get rid of him. Like we still have, how much did I say we had? Like a, we still have 102 million. I don't need to get rid of him. If I have to splash 25 to 30 million on Duvarch out of that 100 million, I'm happy enough of that. We get so fucking sidetracked. But boys, like I said today, we are going to be playing Bear and we're going to be playing Newcastle. So let's jump over into the games. Also, one of the good things is about the matches today as well. You get to see, perhaps you haven't seen Darvich and Cat. Did Baku just run past him and then kick the ball out himself? Look, that's, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, you haven't really seen Darvich and Khan play yet. So um, I'm excited the Shree's basically. They are very, very good. Like I said, the one thing we have to remember, very, very young. They're very, very young. Like, our, our three midfielders are 18 years old. <laughs> our team is extremely young. Riddell Baku uh, is our oldest player at, like, 26. Like, in our starting team, Riddell Baku is our oldest player at 26. Like, we have to remember, like, it's going to take a wee bit of time for all those players to develop. Even our keeper, Seaman, one I'm super, super happy with. He's young, German. He's actually got decent leadership skills. We, I'll show you this. I'll show you the captain's thing after this. Actually, hold on. I think I can show you it now, can't I? You go to tactics, captains. Right, Anasio, right, if we look through our leaderships, Falkirk doesn't start. Can't really do a lot. Anasio, 15 leadership. Seaman, 15 leadership. Khan doesn't start. Badi Shubu's got 14. Diamande's got 13. Euro's got 13. darvouch has got 13. Like, we have a decent amount of captains. Like, between Anasio, Seaman, probably Diamande and Euro, we have four good captains there that I'm more than happy to play with. And that's one thing as well. Like I said, having good captains in your team, I like to have my defenders as my captains. I don't know what it is. I just like to have either my keeper or my defensive line. And like the person who's our captain to be at the back and just like sort of being able to see everything. Is it a placebo effect? 
Probably. <laughs> do I care? No. I'm going to do it anyway. Like I said, leave in the comments down below. Let me know. Who do you use play as your captain? Like I said, I'd like, I'd like it to be my keeper or my centre back. But if you're starting a new team, sometimes you kind of have to know. I mean, if you come into a team and like your fucking striker has 20 fucking captaincy and he's the only person that can captain your team, you're not going to take him off captaincy. You know what I mean? But like if I have the choice, it's definitely going to be a keeper or a centre back. I was just about to say, I actually like how Asan and Darvich are so big and they're confident on the ball. And he just, he was just like, look at me go. Diamante, look, Asan, look, he's so big. Like 6'3 is absolutely massive. That was a good ball. Just like a wee zipper in the corner. Great run from Makoko. I'm not going to lie. I thought he missed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did think he missed. But this team I'm super excited for. And like Football Manager is a game that I actually really, really enjoy. And a few people have commented and saying like some of the stuff that I show you is like in the background and why I tinker with my team and like what I'm thinking has helped you. Look, if I can help somebody else learn how to play the game a wee bit better, because look, I'm still there. Let's be honest. We're all still fucking learning how to play Football Manager. I need, actually need to take a sand off. I've just seen he got hurt. Like we're all still learning how to play Football Manager. There is so much shit in this game. Like it's basically, I, I call this spreadsheet manager. It's pretty much what it is. There's just fucking numbers and stuff everywhere, but you can you can overcomplicate the game as well. An example, right? So when you go to your training and you go up to the top, actually, before I talk about that, I'll actually, I'll go back and just show you because I want to show you this quickly. I know we're leaving the match. Training-wise, right? This is something that I do. So I basically go in here, right? I go to training and go to shared. All I do is I make sure I have a good assistant manager. I let him control the training. If I have a really, really good uh, head of youth development, I let him control the individual training. Like, this was something I didn't know a couple of years ago till I, wa I was watching somebody else's video, watching them do a playthrough. I think they were oh, fucking playing as Liverpool or something. And I was like, brilliant. I didn't even know that was there. There's so many things in all these wee sort of silly tabs. There's so much to keep track of. So like if you miss something, that's fine. See if I can help somebody learn how to play the game a bit better because I've learned from other people so we can all be stupid and learn together. I mean, boys, teamwork. <laughs> Let's get back to the fucking match. Right, Asan got a wee knock, so we do need to bring him off. I also need to bring Riddell Baku off at halftime. He has a wee bit of an injury or he had a wee bit of an injury there and he's only come back, so... The assistant recommended only playing for 45 minutes. So I'm going to take him off at halftime. I'll probably bring Felix on because he can only play 45 minutes because he's only just come back. So I'm just probably going to interchange them too. One of the things that I'm super happy about is we can score, in, but this is also the Makoku in this football manager doesn't seem to have the injury prone trait because last year in the last FM, he was very, very injury prone like all the fucking time. Like he was getting hurt like the way Reina gets hurt all the time. In this, he's really good. Look at that for a finish. Dude, I am still very... Yes, we had to pay 35 million for him. I know we get rid of Reyna for a total of 80 million, and we technically made a 45 million pound profit. But if Sully wouldn't have fucking rejected that first team when we tried to sell him, we would have got Ooze Khan for half a million. For anybody that doesn't know, like I said, I tried to get Khan ages ago. And we were like, right, okay. We had no money because probably you're Borussia Dortmund. And I was like, right, this wee German kid looks amazing. I think somebody actually recommended him to me. And I went and had a wee look at him. And I was like, this kid looks amazing. We can get him for half a mil. Sully, I think it was, who was it? Was it Inter? He was going to go to Inter. And then we were like, right, or was it Juventus? It may have been Juventus. I was like, right, we'll get rid of him. 20 or million. That'll fucking pay for that. Because we had, we had nothing. We had no wage, but I couldn't even move the wage budget to like give us a transfer budget. So I was like, right, we'll get rid of Sully. We get Ooze Cannon. And then I offered for Ooze Khan because Sully was basically just about, he, he was basically got to the contract stage. And I said, like, yes, right, we'll get him out the door and then we'll bring Ooze Khan in. So I went, transferred to the contract. And then literally, as I went to accept, fucking Sully went, no, I don't want to play for them. And then I had to wait for another offer to come in. And then by the time he had went to enter, Man City had signed him for half a million. At that point, I had I probably would have had to pay like six million because you always have to pay more than the computer fucking pays for them. But like we had got them for six million, like half a season ago, <sighs> instead of having to pay thirty four. But like I said, these things happen. I blame Sully. It's all his fault. I'm not gonna lie. I was just sitting here chilling. There has been 
fuck all replays from like half time. I wasn't too sure if Gao Karras was going to shoot or not. It was a foul, and I was like, was that a foul inside the box? And then Gao Karras just hit that. If that was my keeper, I would be so upset, bro. I'd be so upset. But we're doing very, very well right now. Like I said, there hasn't been a lot of replays, but like you can tell by the team ratings, and like our front three is playing really, really well. I'm super excited. Like the, the Khan thing. Dude, Diamande has to be one of my favorite center backs. Like, he really, really is. Even if that doesn't count. I think it does because they're all cheering. Diamande, like, him and Anashio always score goals. When we, not that we need a goal right now, but, like, the amount of times Diamande and saves for me has scored goals at really, really important times has been fantastic. One player, like I said, your guy, Samson Beidou, look, if you can get him in your save really, really cheap. Like I said, I only knew about this guy because a scout recommendation, I sent the scouts out to find me like decent young centre backs. But obviously, I still don't know all the amazing players, all the wee hidden gems in like the new, the, in this FM. Look, I don't know every fucking player. Nobody knows every player unless you, you sit and look at like spreadsheets of like who's the best player. I don't. I just play the game, see who's available and just go from there. This guy for 17 million, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't regret buying Euro. For 80 million but if i would have got this guy for 17 we could have saved ourselves so much money not that we need the money because we're doing very very well financially we've done a lot of really really smart transfers but this one's still a wee bit of a uh, we could have saved like 63 million so boys a fucking nice four with a little bit because like let's be honest Bayer have a very, very good team. Like, no, I mean, they've got Verts, Xhaka, Grimaldo, Tao. I mean, they have a very, very good team. Frimpong as well. And like, you just look at our ratings down here. 7.5, 8.9, 7.1. Only one player had a 6.7. That was Khan because I just brought him on at the end of the match because a Ning got a wee bit of a knock, so he didn't get a chance to even get a rating. Because I think if you bring him on after, like, the 70th minute, they don't get a rating, right? So the fact that, like, every one of our players is playing fantastic. Also... If anybody, I might actually put it up on the community page. If people want me to make a video, like a wee short video for this tactic, I'll probably do it because I did show the tactic in a previous video, but a lot of people have been leaving comments and stuff. And then I have to keep referring them back to that video where if I can just tag our own video. So if people want to see that, if you want to see me make a video on this tactic, leave in the comments down below. Let me know, boys. So boys, I was going to end up bringing you some Newcastle game. I'm not going to lie to you. It was a fucking snooze fest. Finish one each. There was four replays the whole game and two of them was goals. <laughs> So the games in between that, we'll play PSV in the Champions League. Look, we beat them 1-0. Julian Brandt, I kind of rotated the team a little bit, tried to rest a few people. Then we played Augsburg, beat them 2-0. The thing here, we can scored one and Euro scored one, but we lost Diamande for fucking like five weeks, which is uh, going to be a little bit of a suck fest because, uh, you know, Diamande's kind of, he's a wee bit sort of instrumental in our team. It, clearly, he's our libero. He's the one that we rely on to take the ball out of the defense. But Anashio can also do that as well. So it just means a bit a boo or a ba 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 boo. Samson. I'm just going to call him Samson. It means he gets a chance to have a lot of football. And it means he's look fantastic at both feet. Big, strong, quick. He can play with the ball. Look, his first touch and dribble, not amazing. It is what it is. He's playing as a ball playing defender. I, he's not the libero, so I don't need him to be really, really good on the ball. But it means he gets an opportunity, and also I get an opportunity to see how good he is on the ball and what he actually plays like all the time. So like I said, beat Augsburg 2-0, did lose Doom Monday. It is what it is. Then we went and played Newcastle, drew with them one each, and Ash, who scored for us. You'll, you'll never guess who scored for them. It was Isaac. Because <laughs> who else has got a score for Newcastle? But like I said, all in all, I think with regards to the team, I think that I'm super, super happy with this team. I think this team is very, very good. I would like to bring in the one thing I have noticed is something I'll probably do in the summer. We need a wee bit more squad depth because as you can see, like Prince and Ning is currently not fit and Felix is not fit. Then we have Morley, we have Diamande and Pullman are injured. So the squad starts to look, once we get like two, three or three or NGs in and around there somewhere, the squad starts to look a little thin. So that's probably something I'm going to probably do in the summer. But like I said, boys, I think we've done very, very well today. Like I said, we got a, wee, a good, solid 4-0 win over Bayer. Drew in Newcastle would have liked to get the win and stuff, but it is what it is. Look, he can't smash absolutely everybody. And we've been doing that a lot. Like I said, with regards to the league, the Bundesliga, like we're like, what? How, how many points are we ahead? I didn't even show you that after the thing. We are 10 points clear, clear of Bayern. Our goal difference is 60, which is absolutely wild. Makoku's got 18 goals, which is fantastic. 
He's one that I'm very, very happy with. Like I said, one, we didn't have to buy another striker because he's already here. I would like to see him get a wee bit more football in real life so I can kind of see what he's like. I've been trying to find some of the Dortmund games so I can have a wee watch and kind of see what, like, Adeyemi's playing like and what Makoko's playing like in real life. But where I live, not really overly available. <laughs> but guys, I think that's going to be a good spot to stop off for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to on YouTube. Have yourselves a fantastic day.